Hey guys, so a couple years ago I found this really cool batik project and so I figured for my first YouTube video I would share it with you. It's an alternative style batik and this is my example right here. It uses um, paint and glue instead of the traditional wax and dye. So today this is what I will be showing you how to make. Okay, for today's batik we'll need washable glue. You can use either the white type of glue or the gel glue um, just as long as it's washable you'll need fabric I have a muslin fabric which is just a cheap thin fabric um, found you can buy it at Walmart Hobby Lobby and most fabric stores but you could also do um, this type of batik like on a canvas bag or tote or a t-shirt that you have you could do this um, on lots of different fabrics you'll need a pencil to draw out your design and then you will also need acrylic paints um, these are just simple craft paints that are found at most stores. You don't really want one that has um, a gloss finish to it, just a regular matte acrylic paint. So those are our supplies that we'll need. And I'm going to begin by drawing out my design onto the muslin fabric. Since it's summertime and I've been thinking about the beach a lot, I decided I would do um, an underwater scene um, kind of as my inspiration for today. So I'm going to start out with the seahorse. The great thing is you can draw this out in pencil so that if you are not um, happy with your design, you can erase and change it up before it's set in stone. Okay, so now I've basically got um, my initial design, except it's lacking interest. It's a, we can tell it's a seahorse and coral, but we need to spruce it up a little bit. And so the first thing we want to talk about is line. One way to do this is to use a variety of different types of lines. It can help if you just kind of sketch out some ideas for lines before you get started. So I've just kind of made like this little piece of paper. It shows zigzag lines, straight lines, just a series of slanted lines, wavy lines, um, like a loopy line, arched lines, dotted lines, and spiral lines. So these are all like great examples to have nearby while you're working to kind of inspire you and think of different ways you could incorporate line. And when you do that, you are going to create pattern in different areas. And so... Just like a simple curved line when you repeat it can make something very interesting to the eye. You can also use curved lines to make like scales if you're doing a fish. Um, you can overlap squares to create neat designs, um, diagonal lines. You can make, you know, a harlequin pattern. So the possibilities with lines and pattern are endless, but these help to create interest in your artwork. So now I'm going to figure out how I'm going to incorporate line and pattern into my artwork. So I think I'll start with the seahorse and I'm going to come in and work with just kind of some lines that vary in thickness. They'll start out thick and then they get thinner and so I'm just drawing where these lines will come in and I can even get creative and have some of them like curve around. And so there is my drawn out design for my batik. Now your next step is going to be to add the glue. And so we're going to put some cardboard underneath our muslin fabric or whatever type of fabric you're using because it, whatever fabric you're using, it's likely that the glue will seep through. And so if you're working at a table that you care about or on a surface that you care about, you're gonna wanna put something under that to protect your surface. And now I'm gonna use the white glue just because, you know, I'm a stickler for tradition and I'm just used to white glue. I don't know, the 
I guess I'm kind of scared of gel glue, but a lot of people use it and are happy with it, but I'm sticking with my white glue. So it's not as easy to see, um, but you can tell I'm just tracing. And so I'm going to sit here and anywhere there's a pencil line, there is going to be glue. Okay, so you can see this is how your batik will look before the glue dries and the paint's added. And what I'll do at this point is I will take it outside and I will let it, it's a sunny hot day here, so I'll let it dry outside. Um, it could take two or three hours maybe to dry, but I'll show you again um, before I add the paint, you know exactly what the glue will look like once it's dry. But this is it wet and ready to sit in the sun and ready for the glue to dry. Okay, so I left the batik outside in the sun to dry for about two hours, and we can tell now that it is all the way dry. It's probably harder for you to see the glue. It's clearer now. It kind of has a crispy feel to it, so that means that we're ready to add paint. Before you start painting, there is one thing you need to consider. We have a lot going on with different lines and things overlapping, and so contrast is going to be really important for this batik. And so I made a little visual um, to kind of help you with contrast. And these circles show you um, kind of what contrast is. Right here, this is the same blue, so there's no contrast. That's why it says none. This one shows some contrast. We have a lighter blue and kind of a darker blue. Um, and there's some contrast. We can tell a difference. But here we have a good example of contrast. We have a cool color of blue next to a warm color, like a reddish orange. That really creates a lot of interest and it really helps that red to stand out. Since this is an underwater scene and I'm going to have a lot of blue, that reddish orange color is a great choice for my seahorse because it will help it to stand out. So I'm going to keep that in mind and use contrast throughout my batik to make it interesting to look at and so that we can see the objects that are in there so that they'll stand out um, from the water. So I'm going to start with the seahorse. painted it all in. There's places like this where it's just glue where there's not any paint because that'll end up being white later. But in a lot of places I've painted over that glue and it will still be white once I've washed it out. Now I'll just give it a few minutes to dry. Lots of it's already dried just while I was in the painting process. And so probably about 15 minutes I'll wait and let the rest of it dry. Then I'll put it in the sink um, in a bowl of hot water and I'll let it soak for 15 minutes in the hot water and then I'll wash it and like rub the little pieces of glue off, wash till the water runs clear and then let it dry and have a finished batik. So I've got the painting process done and next time we see it in a minute, it will be the finished product. So I hope you all enjoyed making your batik. 
Um, please comment below. Share your boutiques with me. I would love to see them. And then um, keep up with me. Subscribe. Like my stuff. Find me on social media at Samantha Wood Art. Thanks.